presentation for today. So I want to appreciate everybody who is here today and I would like to invite you to be with us on Tuesday and Wednesday for our workshop part of our conference. Please, everybody, be invited to our workshop part on Tuesday and Wednesday and you see it on the, on the bottom of your program. And then we will have two days after our conference where we go to the village of the Karen Sage whom you met yesterday here. So we will go two hours by car to the Karen village and experience this village and stay overnight and get the wisdom in the context, not only in the classroom. And then come back. So it would be the Thursday and Friday. So please, there is a, a list outside on the registration table. Anybody who is interested to join us, please sign now or, you know, just after this presentation. Because we will all spread in all directions after that. So thank you for signing yourself in if you're interested. Thank you. Okay, and I'd like to take the opportunity, because I keep forgetting to mention, but for those of you who are going to be staying in Chiang Mai, uh, there's a fire outside on one of the tables about upcoming events from the Burma Study Center, and you'll see that we have, including the book launch for Jeff's book, Dign Dignity Amidst the Rubbish, at the end of the month, we also have two other presentations on Thursday afternoons in, in, at the... Uh, that it, they will be at the Faculty of Social Sciences, uh, which is the building directly across from the Faculty of Humanities. So if you're interested, please make sure you get this handout. And also, take a, take besides looking at the, the exhibitions from Victoria and Jeffrey that are up, take a minute to look at the other information that's on the tables, because it, the, the uh, Burma-related information that's out today probably won't be at the other days of the conference, so today's your last chance. So the exhibition of Jeffrey and um, Victoria is today the last day. So please be aware that this exhibition is now closing. And please have a look and appreciate and give your recognition. Uh, I forgot to say tomorrow 11 people uh, here go to the Alahu village. Uh, the van will pick us up at 8.30 at Sintana Resort. 8.30 Sintana Resort. All right, so now we are ready to begin our final presentation today. And I really want to thank Ursula and the others from We Women Foundation for coming at very short notice to give us a presentation. We realized that we did not have enough female representation. I'm not sure if you've noticed, but every other presenter today has been a male. And we thought it was very important to do anything we could to get get a female speaker. And we didn't just get one, we actually are going to have six. So we're really lucky. So now there's more women than men. <laughs> you really corrected the situation for us. And um, it's also the We Women Foundation, the representatives have really made a big effort to be here today because not only did we invite them with very short notice, but also they are finishing a documentary film that's going to premiere this coming Friday at Documentary Arts Asia in Friday uh, in Chiang Mai. And we're going to see the trailer of that documentary today. And so I would like to introduce the founder of, docu of We Women Foundation, it's been a long day, Ursula Katz, and then she will in turn introduce some of the other speakers, her colleagues and students from We Women.
probably all know. So we all marched yesterday. We had a lot of fun, so it's really great to do that. Um, and most of the time, we always like our Sunday off after that, or our day off. But this time, we thought, yeah, we'll go for the conference and we'll, we'll come here because it's a good opportunity also to see you. And I hope we have some time actually after um, after we finish the presentation to do some a good Q and A session, um, and maybe we can meet after. Okay. Um, yeah, I was already introduced by Garrett. My name is uh, Ursula Ketz. I'm uh, the founder of the Women Foundation. And um, the rest of the women I would like to introduce as well. This is uh, the first, uh, I'm starting with Login. <laughs> She's one of our uh, in-university students here at Chiang Mai University, studying social science. But she will tell more about it herself. And next to her is Maya and Maya Hoffman, and she's actually uh, volunteering with us, and um, she's going to tell us something about that. And next to that is Cindy Wilkinson, who's our general manager at We Women, and she's been uh, managing uh, We Women for about um, one and a half year now, and I've been on and off in the Netherlands and here, and uh, I've been very grateful for that. So. And next to her is Wayne Moon. And she's also a student in Free University Students of the Women Foundation. We've got Anna Borden next to her. She's also volunteering. And then it's Hannah next to her. And as you see, we have a lot of volunteers. And that's always great because we can't do without them, as we're a small NGO. Um, just to start, uh, basically what we do at We Women is uh, we, uh, that we're dedicated to empowering ethnic women from marginalized communities in Burma by providing them with professional and educational opportunities. And basically what our uh, aim is, is to get women into leadership positions. That's, that's what we're working on full, full time. And um, that's a very great class. Just to give you some uh, background about the foundation, uh, basically I started the foundation um, after I did, uh, first I traveled uh, in Burma and it really touched me. I think, uh, I don't know if everyone has been to Burma, but um, yeah, it was about uh, probably, oh, but anyway, I mean, for me it was seven years ago, it was the first time I went in there and it really touched my heart. I, I just couldn't let go of all the people telling me basically, you know, really what Aung San Suu Kyi also said, like, use your freedom to promote arts. At that time, it was a different situation, of course. Um, although we all know also today there's still a lot of difficulties. But at that time, um, we also tried to travel more paths that were not, like, traveled by everyone. So, we, and we got all these, like, men and women basically asking us to do something. And that inspired me to go back to the Netherlands and start uh, my master in uh, anthropology. And I focused my research on uh, Myanmar, where um, I focused on women. But I didn't go inside uh, Myanmar at that time because uh, it was still too dangerous and unethical, I felt, for the women over there. Um, because for me it wouldn't have been dangerous, but for them at that time it would be to talk with me about sensitive issues. So I choose to come here in Chiang Mai and I did my research among uh, a Shan community of construction workers and of young NGO workers. And so basically I lived with some of the women three months, I stayed with them in their, uh, in their homes, I, they, were very, uh, they were very caring and uh, I, could just, um, yeah, I could just live with them, I didn't even have to pay rent, I didn't want to get anything they cooked and it was amazing, it was such a great experience. And um, basically from the research I found that uh, women felt uh, that they wanted to fight alongside with men for human rights and rights in Burma, but they felt they couldn't do that because they didn't have enough uh, status and they didn't have enough tools basically to do that. So the, uh, they felt that the way to, to, um, to, to help and fight for the human rights in Burma was uh, basically to get higher education. 
And, uh, and so as I came home with those results, I felt I need to do something now. I'm home, I, like, I finished my master, it's all nice and well, but now I need to do it in the field. So I went back and started the We Women Foundation in 2009. And uh, basically what I said before, to help them to become leaders in their communities. So um, we, we work with women who really have a strong feeling about working and giving back to their communities. They all come from uh, poverty and areas that the women um, have even less than they have. They know also that you know, they got a chance now and they want to give something back again. It's very inspiring. I always feel, uh, I mean, every day when I work with them, I feel I'm privileged, actually. So I felt it's a really good choice to, to do this as they, um, yeah, as, I mean, as, you're, as I'm inspired almost day, on a daily basis by women who have less opportunity than I had and um, who are always, never give up hope. I think that's the most inspiring thing about it. Um, Basically, a little bit more about the Women Foundation is that our projects are based on extensive research. As much as we can, we do research as we really want to give a more insider's approach and really want to listen to the women and, and the needs that they have. And actually, it's not only about the women. We are also, of course, listening to the men. Um, and. Um, Basically, um, it feels good to work from that approach as um, gives a more holistic way of looking at it. And what we basically try to avoid is also an outside point of view on development work, um, which we feel is really important. Um, and um, yeah, that's why again also the research is part and very important part of our project. And what we also do is like we're not, like we say, we want women into leadership positions and we're giving higher education. But what we do is basically try to reach it from A to Z. So they come in at the women and uh, they start off in a pre-university program. And uh, we just help them through the years. It depends on how long it takes for each woman. Uh, but we'll help them even when they're graduated or even if they didn't get a scholarship and they choose a different path at one stage, we still want to help them to gain the skills that they need to become leaders. So we follow our women and we give them a lot of personal attention. We know them all one by one. I mean, we have a smaller group of women that we work with, but we all know them and that's really, yeah, that's really great basically. And that again gives me the inspiration. And I think all of us, I, think, I see that also with the volunteers and always, yeah, they feel like, you know, they know what, they know the women, we're talking about them personally, it's not like a huge group, which is, you know, which we don't know really. Um, the reason that we were focusing on women um, is basically because um, I felt also that there were not enough women leaders in Burma and um, around the world, I feel also that women should get more chances. I've always been, you know, I've always voted for women. I've always, like, promoted women. I don't know, it's just something ingrained. Uh, I think my mom taught me very young because one of the first songs that I could sing was a feminist, feministic song, and I would mispronounce feminism in, in Dutch. It became something really different, something like feminism. And, um, but my mom always reminded me of that, so um, uh, yeah, it's not so weird that I'm here today and doing what I'm doing. Um, and uh, also, I mean, I'm not the only one who believes in women empowerment. But as you see, I put up some quotes of a bit more famous people than, than me. Um, so, who say, for example, educating girls may be the single highest return investment available in a developing world. I think most of you have heard of quotes as well, I mean, but it's just always nice to look at it and say, like, look, you know, that's why we do it, yeah. So, Ban Ki-moon also, where women are educated and empowered, economies are more productive and strong, and where women are fully represented, societies are more peaceful and stable. 
And it's really lovely to have Cindy actually uh, at Women because she's so good in finding all these great quotes. So I'm just being really inspired uh, regularly when I read all our proposals that are going to our donors and then I find some beautiful quotes again. So it's really great because there are a lot. So, uh, Okay, and why do we focus on higher education? I mean, I think for most of you, this is, yeah, I don't, I'm preaching for the choir here, but at least, you know, I always explain why do we do that, because we have, you know, we use a bigger budget for a smaller amount of people, basically, and it's hard to get funds for that. But, um, in the end, yeah, what we really feel, I mean, the main reason behind this is that we want, I mean, I don't feel that as an outsider, me and other like foreigners that work with me in the We Women Foundation should um, should decide what is good for Burma or should uh, decide what is needed for Burma. So um, basically we feel that the women themselves should come up with their own programs, their own ideas. So if we educate the women, they can create their own, you know, they can create their own what I said, programs, and I mean, they can work on higher positions where they can change policies and make changes that they want to make. And I believe that, and I know because we have already graduates uh, uh, who are already like empowering thousands of people in black zone, in gray zone areas, for example, in Sean State, where, um, you know, where, I mean, we wouldn't even, like I wouldn't even been able to get there in the first place and to know what was going on there and um, she's just working with about uh, over like she just she's not even finished but she already like um, she already within her research got the university and an NGO and so enthusiastic that they would work on a project while she was doing her research where she um, where she worked on um, health uh, prevention and um, and she already helped over 4,000 uh, people in those villages, which is amazing, I think. And that's why we do it, basically. That's why we do higher education. Um, yes, it's sustainable and everything. Well, I'm not going to repeat what's going on here because we know that. Um, okay, just briefly, what are we doing at the moment? Just in short, so you know. I've, I've talked about some of our programs already, but what I said, we're trying to do it from A to Z. So we're starting our, uh, the women come in, they get into a pre-university uh, program in Thailand. And basically we started this month in Burma, which we're really proud of, because it's, uh, that's, it's, it's a bit harder to work there. Uh, but it's very, very grateful. And um, then we, when our women are in our pre-university, they apply for scholarship grants. And we've granted now around 16 scholarships. And we have also women that got scholarships from other donors but are still in our in-university program that we have, which is always helping the women while they're in university. And one of the big things that we do, which is in university and in the pre-university is coaching. So we, we help them uh, basically, in pre-uni, it's more about what are your goals, where do you want to go, you know, it's sometimes really hard if they come in and they say, yeah, I want to study uh, at the CMU and um, I want to study social sciences, so, so why do you want to study that? And then and very often the answer is like, yeah, but my friend also studies there and I know the way and how to get in and, and uh, I mean, it might even be the, in the end that they were getting towards that they're studying social science, right? But um, first of all, I then want to talk, what are your ambitions? Where do you want to go? So that's, that's, and that's really great to do that, to explore that with them. And they're really, actually, most of them are really uh, happy with the coaching and they, that's something which they really appreciated that told me over the years. So when, when we're in university, the coaching is much more about you know, academic issues, of course, and uh, and most of the time I, I can't help with that because I'm too busy or doing other things, but then we have academic advisors who we team up with them, and there's also issues, yeah, other issues, but anyway, I mean, that's, it's, it's more, it's very, you know, what I said, we know our students, we know what's going on, and part of that is because we do the coaching, 